Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be talking about serotonin syndrome. We're going to be talking about what serotonin syndrome is, the signs and symptoms of serotonin syndrome, the medications that put you at risk for serotonin syndrome, how to prevent serotonin syndrome, and lastly, the treatment options for serotonin syndrome. So what is serotonin syndrome? Serotonin syndrome is a rare but dangerous side effect of antidepressants that I cover in this video that I made on the top antidepressants used for treating major depressive disorders. Order. It occurs when there's too much serotonin in your nervous system, which can be intentional as in an overdose or unintentionally by taking too many medications that increase serotonin. And so the signs and symptoms of serotonin syndrome are mild symptoms, include nausea, diarrhea, nervousness, insomnia, tremor, and big pupils. Moderate symptoms include hyperreflexia or hyperreflexes, sweating, agitation, restlessness, muscle spasms, and even side-to-side -side eye movements involuntarily. Severe symptoms would include a high fever greater than 101 degrees Fahrenheit, confusion, delirium, which can lead to coma, and in its worst case, even death. And so the medications that put you at risk for serotonin syndrome include, of course, the antidepressants. You have your selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, your serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, your tricyclic antidepressants, and your MAOYs. Now take note with the MAOYs that there are some medications that are MAOYs but not antidepressants that you should be aware of, such as the antibiotics, isonazid, which is used for tuberculosis treatment, and linzalid, which is also known as Zyvox, used in hospitals to treat various number of infections. There's also Parkinson's drugs like selegiline and rosagiline, and there's methylene blue, which is a thiazine dye used to treat a specific type of anemia. Other medications that are not classified as antidepressants include pain medications such as tramadol, meperidine or demerol, methadone, and fentanyl. Over-the-counter medications that can often increase serotonin include dextromethorphan, which is the DM in a lot of the cold and cough medications, including cough syrup. So anytime you see DM, that's this dextromethorphan. And then there's chlorophenone neuramine, also known as chlortabs or chlortrimeton, which is used in allergy and cold medications. Then you have your herbals such as St. John's wort, 5-HTP, L-tryptophan, and even some diet pills, especially if they contain phentermine, that will definitely increase your serotonin levels. And then there's the illicit drugs like ecstasy, cocaine, and even methamphetamine and amphetamines such as Adderall can increase serotonin levels. And then there's some commonly listed drugs that don't have a lot of evidence to support that they can cause serotonin syndrome, but there is a potential for them to increase serotonin levels. And so those medications are your migraine medications like your triptans. And there are even some antidepressants that have a less incidence of serotonin syndrome, such as amitriptyline, mirtazapine, and trazodone, and some antiemetics like odansetron, which is also known as Zofran and metoclopramide, which is also known as Reglan. And other psychotropic medications such as buspirone and lithium have a potential to also increase serotonin. And this list is not exhaustive by any means because there are other medications out there that can increase serotonin and even some medications that can inhibit the metabolism of the antidepressant that you're on, which could then also increase the level of serotonin in your body. And so to prevent serotonin syndrome, it's necessary that you make sure you let your providers know all of the medications that you're taking, including over-the-counter medications. So don't assume that they know all the medications that you're taking and don't assume that all of the providers talk to each other because in reality, 
they don't. And so make sure you're telling them all the medications that you're taking, again, including your over-the-counter medications, including those cough syrups and those herbal supplements. You can also do some research on your own, and there's some links to some drug interaction checkers down in the description that you can use and put your list of medications in there and see if there are any contraindications or risks of serotonin syndrome with the medications that you're on. So if you're on a combination of say two antidepressants or combination of an antidepressant and a pain medication like tramadol and you're not experiencing serotonin syndrome, that's great. That means you're tolerating it just fine. However, it's important that you keep in mind that if you are on more than one of these medications, you are at a higher risk for serotonin syndrome. So increasing either of those medication dosages or even starting to take a cough medication, which seems benign, like Robitussin DM or something like that, can increase your risk for serotonin syndrome. And so you have to be on the lookout for the symptoms, especially those mild symptoms, because it's important to catch it early on and recognize that you're starting to experience those symptoms of serotonin syndrome and then stop the offending agent. So if you start taking a cold medication and you start having symptoms like nausea, diarrhea, nervousness, tremor, stop that cough medication. Those symptoms, if it was a result of serotonin syndrome, those symptoms should disappear within 24 hours. However, you should let your provider know that way you can be monitored and they may have you go to the emergency room just to be monitored for 24 hours because serotonin syndrome can progress very rapidly going from mild moderate to severe and so when we're talking about treatments for serotonin syndrome, the treatments are supportive. And the first thing they're gonna do is stop the offending agent. So they're gonna discontinue the medications that are known to cause an increase in serotonin and then provide you with supportive treatments like intravenous fluids, perhaps some cooling blankets, and if needed, a serotonin antagonist medication like ciproheptadine may be used. And if it was an intentional overdose or you just took a large amount of a medication that can increase serotonin and you start experiencing these symptoms, they may even use activated charcoal to help get you to excrete that medication um, and get it out of your body more quickly. And now I know this is a lot of information. And so luckily there is a patient handout that came from this comprehensive article on serotonin syndrome and it's an open access article and so a link to that handout is down in the description so you can take that handout download it onto your phone share it with someone that you know is taking an antidepressant and if it's you just review it and look at it and remind yourself of the potential medications that can increase your risk for serotonin syndrome and be alert of those signs and symptoms if you start to experience them call your doctor right away for treatment so that's my overview of serotonin syndrome, and I hope you found it useful. Do you have a personal experience with serotonin syndrome? We'd love to hear about it. Drop it down in the comment section below. And remember to like and subscribe to our channel because it really helps get this information out to others who could benefit from learning about serotonin syndrome and all the other topics we talk about here on this channel. And as always, I thank you for watching. I wish you well on your mental health care journey, and I look forward to seeing you next week.